everybody. Welcome back to Taz's Way Closet at Wig Studio One. I'm back with another episode of Dear Taz, where I've invited my audience to ask me questions. If the questions are popular and it looks like it's going to help a lot of people, I may consider making a video about it. If you're interested in submitting a question, you can do so at askdeartaz at gmail.com. New subject matter coming up. So this question I get a lot, and I never have enough time nor enough space to give as thorough of an answer as I might like. So let's hear from Sheila. So Sheila K writes, Dear Taz, some of my favorite brands do not have realistic looking lace fronts. I wish I knew how to deal with making lace fronts look more realistic. Is that a popular question or what? <laughs> so if I had the perfect lace front in front of me now, I would see that it was a very wide lace front extending back into the ear tab, fitting very nicely over the forehead. It would be nice and deep. It would be made from a monofilament material that was fine yet sturdy, uh, not shiny. It would blend in seamlessly to the skin tone. The knots would be fine and they would be uh, gradually get thicker as you move back into the hairline and there would be ample highlights ran up to that lace front to kind of soften the look of it, especially if it's a darker color. This is utopia, right? <laughs> Does the perfect world exist in terms of lace fronts? I think that having perfection each and every time is probably something we should never expect. So it's always good to rely on our own skills to make our wigs look more realistic. Now, as I mentioned, there are some brands I feel like that really knock it out of the park more times than not. So one of those brands that I think just really does an amazing job on their lace fronts and hits most of the areas on my Utopia wish list for lace fronts is Aesthetica. And so here I am wearing the Aesthetica's Ocean in R613 BG14. Now what you'll notice with Aesthetica is, and I can't speak for all of these cap styles, but for every one that I've explored, if it's just a lace front and an open cap, they have an ultra deep lace front. I wish all brands would do this. So on this, on this ocean, it's just a lace front and it's open top, sides and back. That lace front extends halfway back into the crown. It's just like a big U-shaped a lace front. It does extend temple to temple. I love Aesthetica's uh, monofilament that they use for the lace. It's a very fine grid um, and they always have a nice fine fiber which results in a beautiful knotting process right there at the lace front. I feel like they do a great job of sort of blending the fiber so that it looks like it's beginning here and then gradually getting a little thicker as you move back that's always delivers the most realistic look. Uh, their, their monofilament blends into the skin tone very nicely. And I just think that the seams and everything all the way around, Aesthetica typically gets a five-star rating from me. Now the first thing that I think you can do without doing anything permanent to the wig style or the lace front is use a little bit of eye makeup or foundation powder to soften the look of that root. And you can do that without making it look too powdery. So let me give you an example. I'm just using a very light colored um, eyeshadow here. And then what I want to do is kind of soften the areas of the darker knots. Okay, now when it first goes on, you might have to do several applications. When it first goes on, it kind of looks powdery, like it's gray. Um, and you can kind of dust off any excess. 
So just really rub it down into that lace front. Not only will this kind of thing take away any shininess and help the, the monofilament blend a little easier to the skin tone, it's gonna surf, soften the dark, the darkness of those knots and it'll just give a little bit of a softer look to the lace front. I have a couple of different wigs that I regularly do this. So every time I wear them, I just take out and do, just do a little bit of that, especially where it's parted. Um, and it really does a nice job of softening up the look of those knots. So the next idea that I have, um, again, this is not a demonstration. I'm not telling you to do this. Uh, only experienced wig wearers should probably attempt this, or if you have a wig that's kind of at the end of its life and you just wanna kind of experiment. I'm talking about plucking some of the knots away from the lace front. Um, but on something like this, you can really tell where there's a lot of knotting there. And so a camera isn't something that I can really use here to help guide me. But when plucking your lace front, plucking knots, I would go with like every other knot, if you've got a really thickly threaded and, and those knots are pretty big, it would be very easy to spot them, grab them and take and bring them out. Now, one thing when you're plucking um, is that if you have a very fine lace front, you have to be careful not to rip or tear the lace front. This did happen to me one time. Um, I was a little rougher than I thought. And so you have to go about this surgically uh, take your time and be very delicate if you attempt this plucking. So what you want to do is grab a hold of a knot. Take the pointed end of your uh, tweezers. You know, grab a hold of the knot right at the base of the knot. Don't grab it up here because then you're just going to kind of make it coil back and frizz out the fiber without pulling it out. You got to get down to the root right next to the lace front grab a hold of the knot and yank, and that will bring it out completely. That will unravel the root, the knot, and pull it out completely. So a lot of times, uh, not only the lace fronts, but around the face, you can get a lot of thick, thick threads, thick knots all the way around the face, and that might not give the best, most natural look. So I think in addition to a nice looking natural uh, lace front, you can enhance that by thinning a little bit right around the face, just the very fiber right around the face, okay? And I always use uh, the thinning shears and kind of work in a vertical motion, just taking out a little bit of fiber all the way around the face at the very front. If you can thin the front, that's gonna give you a nice realistic look. I don't think you have to go through the whole wig. Um, once you thin the front, that should be enough. So along that same line, um, you can also create a little bit of baby hairs around the hairline. Um, so maybe trimming and thinning just a few of these hairs right around the hairline, okay? Just trim them a little bit, thin them out, trim them, just the very fine hairs at the front. And then you could actually steam them down, uh, not while you're wearing the wig, but putting a wig over a, a mannequin head or a, a fabric head and then isolating the hair and steaming it down and letting it dry or you could use some got to be glued or some sort of contour paste to kind of tack them down. So the baby hairs always get the lace front a more natural look and appearance from the front. See how that works? Um, I put baby hairs in occasionally on my styles. If I know I'll be keeping them to see if you just trim them up and then kind of paste them down. That always looks a little more natural. So Sheila, thanks so much for the question. You really helped me be able to uh, work this into a video and I know it'll help so many. Enjoy your day. See you next time on Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One.